You don't have to sound salesy when handling customer objections. In today's video, I'm sharing what to avoid and five strategies you could use today whenever a prospect brings up an objection to handle that objection properly, move the conversation forward to give you the opportunity to close that deal. A huge mistake salespeople make when handling objections is they don't actively listen to the prospect. They aren't listening to understand. Rather, they, the salesperson, are just listening for when the prospect stops talking so they can respond, and it's typically in a defensive manner. It's you versus me. That objection is something that I have to overcome and beat. That right there, that mentality impacts the language I use when I'm handling an objection. And I'm going to come off salesy. When you come off salesy, there's no chance you can progress that conversation, move it forward to potentially close that deal. Instead of listening to respond, you need to listen to understand. You cannot properly handle an objection without understanding the meaning behind it. There are a few strategies you could use today to understand the meaning behind an objection to properly handle it, which isn't going to come across and sound salesy. I learned the first four strategies from Chris Voss. The first is selective word mirroring. According to Voss, mirrors work magic. Repeat the last three words or the critical one to three words of what someone has just said. We fear what's different and are drawn to what's similar. Mirroring is the art of insinuating similar Similarity and connection, which facilitates bonding and trust. Let's take the common objection, your price is too high. Mirroring that objection would sound like this. Hey Matt, we liked what we saw today, but your price, it's just too high. Too high? I'm repeating the last two words the prospect said. Now, what does this do? Number one, it demonstrates and shows the prospect, hey prospect, I'm actively listening to you. And number two, when you mirror, it typically will elicit more information out of the prospect to better understand the objection to give you, the salesperson, the opportunity to move that conversation forward. The second technique is labeling. Labeling is my favorite sales technique. According to Voss, labeling negative emotions aids in diffusing them, while labeling positive emotions reinforces them in negotiation. The golden rule when negotiating with individuals is that humans all want to be appreciated and understood. Labeling is a starting point to pursue this universal appreciation. Labeling starts with two phrases. It sounds like, or it seems like. So going back to that price objection, Matt, we liked everything we saw today, but your price is just too high. Okay, it sounds like you're comparing my price to that of a few of my competitors. Again, what this is gonna do, very similar to mirroring, it shows I'm listening to you, I'm actively listening to the conversation, I hear you, Mr. or Mrs. Prospect. And number two, when you label, it's gonna elicit more information, and that is our entire goal when handling objections. We need to understand, fully understand what we're up against, that obstacle, to give ourselves the opportunity to potentially close that deal. Now, a powerful labeling technique, it's more advanced, I wouldn't start out with this until you get the label down, is a mislabel. You are labeling an emotion, dynamic, motivation, or circumstance incorrectly. Why I like mislabeling so much is people, especially prospects, love correcting salespeople. They absolutely love it. When they come back and you mislabel a situation, mislabel an objection, when they come back and correct you, you now know that the information they provided is 100% fact, it's 100% truth, and you know what you're up against. It seems like, it sounds like. Start leveraging labels. When you get labels down, start leveraging mislabels to handle or start the process to handle your sales objections to move those conversations forward. The third technique, one of my favorites of all time, the accusation audit. This is Eminem and 8 Mile at the final rap battle, where you as the salesperson are actively getting ahead of any negatives and pushbacks you're bringing up the possible objection. So going back to the price objection example, an accusation audit, before the prospect comes back and pushes back on my price, I say, you're probably gonna think the price is way too high here, or you're probably gonna think that you could get XYZ solution cheaper elsewhere. According to Voss, with these audits, you address the negative concerns harbored in your counterpart's mind. Once the negatives are out in the open, they can't use them against you. It's an easy way to mitigate the negatives that may have led to the objections before they occur. The fourth is isolating an objection. This is a must. If you're gonna use any of these techniques, you need to isolate the objection. What this does, number one, it makes sure that the objection that was just said to you is a real objection and the only objection. So it's making sure there isn't an objection 
behind what they just said and what they just said might be a smokescreen. So if a prospect comes back and they say, hey Matt, we liked what we saw today, but your price, it's just too high. Isolating that objection would sound like, okay, pricing aside, is there anything else holding you folks back from moving forward today? So what that does, it's gonna verify that, you know what, price is in fact the real objection and the only objection, and now I know I just have to handle the price objection to give myself the opportunity to close the deal. And the fifth technique is a Josh Braun technique called calibrating questions. A few examples. If you don't mind me asking, what are the reasons that you're considering an outsourced team? How is that affecting you? What would happen if you waited until next quarter? According to Josh, people are motivated to buy for their reasons, not yours. Calibrated questions help you understand your prospects' motivations for change rather than you giving them your reasons. There you have it, guys. Start using those five techniques today. Don't sound salesy. You don't want to be defensive. You're listening to understand. You're not listening to respond. And if you can do that, you're going to build trust and give yourself the opportunity to close a deal.